A big spiral is a fun way to finish a little quilt. So today I'm going to show you how I quilted this baby quilt with a spiral. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pajagi and embroidery. So today I'm going to be quilting this little quilt with spiral quilting. And spiral quilting is really um, fun and dramatic quilting design and it basically has a center point and it just goes around and around out from that point and extends to fill the whole quilt. And so this is a really fun um, quilting design. So I'm just gonna show you how I do this one and share some tips and tricks along the way. So for spiral quilting, I'm gonna use my walking foot. And if you don't know what a walking foot is, you can check out my other video, but your sewing machine might've come with a walking foot or it might be something that you need to purchase separately. But for quilting your quilts on a domestic sewing machine, a walking foot can be very helpful. Now, a couple other general uh, quilting tips. I like to use um, gloves and these gloves just help to grip the fabric. So you can get specific gloves that are sold as quilting gloves or some people like to use gardening gloves. Just anything that has a little bit of rubber or plastic on the fingertips that'll give you a bit of friction as you're moving the quilt top around. Now for spiral quilting in specifically, uh, you're gonna use a lot of thread. So make sure that you have a full bobbin because this is one continuous line. So if you can do it without stopping to uh, wind your bobbin, that is helpful. So we'll start with a full bobbin. And then one last thing is if you have an extension table for your sewing machine, this makes it very helpful. So I have this extension table that I'm gonna put on and this just gives a bigger surface to support my quilt top. Or alternately, if your sewing machine can sink down into the table so that it is flush, that is even better, that is ideal. But anything you can do to increase the area so that your quilt is being supported as you're sewing on it. Now, just before I go to the sewing machine, I did mark the center of my spiral on the quilt. And you can mark the center wherever you want. It doesn't have to be in the center of your quilt. You can have it on the side or have multiple centers and have overlapping spirals. There's a lot of different options, but for this one, I'm just having spirals starting in the middle and going out from there. So I just found a circular shape, the size that I wanted, put it in the middle of the quilt and then traced around it with a hair marker. And so that leaves just a little crease line that I can see on the quilt when I start to quilt and then it will easily just disappear later. So I have marked the center on the middle. So I'm ready to start quilting. At the sewing machine, we can see here is the marked circle and that's where we're gonna start our spiral. So you wanna make sure that you start with your foot on the right side of the circle because then your spiral is going to be going this way and you're going to continue to get bigger and bigger and that means that your quilt will be moving away from your machine. If you started with your walking foot on the left side so that you would be stitching in a counterclockwise, that means with each uh, row of your stitching you would be moving this way and you can see your bulk of your quilt will be coming into your sewing machine. So start on the right side so that you're stitching clockwise and then you will be getting less and less quilt in your machine instead of more and more. So that's a really important tip. The other thing is you wanna have some kind of a guide or rule so that you don't have to mark the whole spiral, you're just following along the, uh, the guide, which is the distance from the line before. So there are a couple of options for this. You could just use your walking foot. And so that means that each line of stitching will be about half an inch or so, depending on the width of your walking foot. And this is a good option, but it has your lines pretty close together. It's a pretty dense spiral. And so um, I want this one to be 
less densely quilted. So I'm not going to be able to use that for this situation. So I'm going to want to use what's called a quilting guide bar. Now a lot of quilting guide bars, they come with your machine and they are quilting guide bars for on the right. And that problem with that is because our line that we're following is going to be on the left. So this quilting guide bar on the right is not going to be useful in this situation. So I have a couple of options because I don't have a left side quilting guide bar for this machine. Many machines come with the right side quilting guide bars and the left ones have to be purchased separately and they can be quite expensive. So I have a couple of options. I have, I can put this guide bar on the um, right side and use it this way. And you can see this is a little bit different. It doesn't look as, uh, perfect as this one, but I could still use that on this side, even though it's not skating along the fabric the way it's supposed to be. The other option is I do have this left side guide bar that was from a different machine. And so this one, if I put it in, it's not exactly the right height for this. We can see it's a little bit off, but this one will still work. So I'm going to use this guide bar, even though it wasn't specifically designed for the machine, it does fit into my walking foot. There's a hole, it just slides through and it'll stay there. And I think I want to use this much of a gap between spaces. So that is, oh, two and a half, maybe almost three inches. Um, and so I think that's going to be fine because I do want this quilt to be kind of lightly quilted, but that is just a personal choice. So you'll see how I use this guide bar as I go along. So I'm going to start off quilting just um, following that marked circle line that I made. And for walking foot quilting, I usually have my stitch length a little bit longer than normal. Uh, but not too much and I'll put on my gloves then just before I start stitching I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top so the way I do that I put my needle down bring it up and we can see that pulls the bobbin thread up and that just stops it from um, getting caught in the back so now I have my bobbin thread and my top thread at the top. So I'm just gonna begin stitching and I'm gonna stitch slowly and I'm gonna be rotating my quilt to follow this line that I've marked. And I have my machine set in the needle down position so that anytime if I have to stop and rotate everything, my needle automatically stays down. If your machine doesn't have that, just when you stop, put your needle down and then you can rotate your quilt. So now I'm coming around to the edge of the circle. So I have a choice. I can either connect this up to make the circle and then start the spiral, or I could start spiraling here and not connect it to the circle. So I'm gonna to choose to connect it to make a circle and then start spiraling out. So now I've made my circle, so I'm just going to keep stitching and I'm going to be gradually getting farther and farther away from the previous stitching line until my stitching line lines up with this guide bar. And then once it lines up with that guide bar, then I'm just going to keep stitching, lining this guide bar with the previous stitching line. So 
So now I've stitched around and you can see that this point, the bond, the back corner, right where it touches the quilt, is right on the previous line. So now I'm just gonna keep trying to follow this line with that point so that my lines will all be the same distance apart. So once you get up near the edge of the quilt, when you come to the edge, you're just going to keep stitching. And now clearly, this is going to be the last line that follows because I'm going to be way off the edge of the quilt. So then I can come in on the corner and I will just be able to stitch parallel lines to fill in the corner. So here in the corner, we can see that I'm no longer con stitching continuous lines, but I'll just come in to find where the edge of the quilt is, and I'll just start quilting here and then do a parallel line. So even though it's not continuous lines, it will still give the look of continuous lines all the way out to the edge. And so now I stitched this short line, I'll just go back and stitch another short line and I'll probably get two or three just to fill in this corner. And that's all I'm going to get. So we can see how these short lines fill in the corners of that. So now the quilting's finished. We can see this big spiral. I just need to trim the edges and bind and the quilt is done. For more details about spiral quilting and nine other ways that you can finish your quilts quickly and easily on your domestic sewing machine, you can check out my ebook, Simple Quilting. It has 10 simple quilting designs that'll give you lots of inspiration for finishing your quilts. And for more quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out ebitistudio.com.